what they described was six equidistant points of light that seemed to be attached to something over a mile wide, but they couldn't quite see what these lights were attached to. And you would hear that again by thousands of people, and they were alarmed because there is a 30-mile radius around the center of the airport called Class B Restricted Airspace. Anyone that comes into that airspace, especially a 1,000 feet altitude that these were, must call into the tower, but no one did. You know, if you're in charge of the airspace over the United States, how likely would you be to admit that, you know, you don't have control over our airspace? We have an amazing array of scientists, of military officers coming forward and either saying, yes, I've had an encounter, or, you know, there's something much more to this topic than meets the eye, and it bears further study. You get an understanding of what the phenomenon is doing and what it's about by dealing with people that it's affected. I remember speaking to the first abductee face to face. It started as a one-time event until she started having reoccurring dreams that other things had happened. And suddenly we saw it, and it's just like they describe in books and videos. This thing's huge, and it's coming down slowly as it goes. Here you go. Where at? Look right up here. I don't have it. Oh, whoa. Straight. Oh, do you see that over there? Which one? Nobody saw it? The thing just like flew across the sky. I think it's easier for people to come out and, and talk about the subject, but I really don't know if that means that a lot of people still feel that it's okay to do so. Some of these people, they don't sleep right. They, they're obsessed with finding out more and more and more. And it's something that some of these folks, it's all that they do. Mm -hmm. It's taken over their lives. 